one what's wrong with bella she looked at him but he had already got her as if he wanted to follow bella but he stopped remembering about chango to wine please go to chango so i need to go wine no please you said you would take it out in tonight to yeah but sorry please go to him he spoke quickly while already walking away Ryan wanted to say no and stop him, but she couldn't as he swiftly disappeared to catch up with Bella. Ryan slapped her for her feeling things and nursed once again as she prepared to return to Jungkook's room reluctantly. Ryan took a deep breath before entering the room. She hastened at the door, but then opened it quietly, knowing Jungkook couldn't open doors by himself without seeking permission. She entered the room and found Jungkook lying on the bed. A white blanket covered his body from the front to the waist. The room dimly light and too cold greeted her. Ryan wondered, how can I wake him up? She said to herself while walking forward, and her body felt a chill, so she began wrapping her arms. Why is this room so cold? As she stands there, she realizes that there is an open window allowing the cold wind to gently spray the white curtains. She thinks it's better to close the window otherwise she will freeze as her body can't bear the freezing cold blowing wind at the same time she wonders how Jungko can peacefully sleep in the chilly cold as she makes her way to the window to close it and stop the freezing air his blanket slightly slides down from his stomach to his thighs exposing his this catches her attention but she quickly shifts her gaze away not wanting to see his body But she couldn't help notice his injury, which grips her heart. In that second, she ignored closing the window and walked towards Jango. Her concern focused on his injury. Seeing the cotton bandages around his face, she wanted to touch the injury to check. She extended her hand towards his stomach, but stopped midway as she thought he'd hurt. How dare she try to touch him? But she recalled Hans' words. She had to take care of Jungkook as if it was only Wayne's responsibility, but her bravery wasn't enough to touch him. She gasped in tightness, her eyes gazing from his injury to his face, seeing that Carlos innocent as he was not to mock the demon himself. He shook her head, trying to convince herself. She said in her mind, her husband might be cruel, but he's still her husband. At least she would have helped him. But she recalled the moment when her father was about to shoot Chango. She blocked his way and begged her father to spare Chango too. But Ryan, he isn't what he appears. He is a dangerous, cruel person, way more than a demon. She said as she shook her head, unwilling to see him in a positive light. Chango, how much longer are you planning to get lost in my face? Suddenly hearing him talk with her closing his eyes she jumped a little as shock gas escaped from her mouth he opened his eyes but didn't turn his head to watch her instead he looked at her from the corner of his eyes as if she had sneaked into his room Jango what are you doing near me she turned his head to watch her with a confused expression when i suddenly her words broke as she tried to give an answer to him But he felt a close freeze on his. When he looked down, he found himself half naked. He widened his eyes, and gave her an unbelieving look. I didn't make you half naked. The cold wind was blowing, and it made your blank slide out, exposing you to me. She said very tensely. But he already knew this because he was about to sleep. He heard her open the door, so he stayed silent to see what she would do while he was sleeping. Jango. Should I believe this? He asked as if he really didn't know anything. She innocently shook her hands, trying to convey her sincerity. Ryan, I swear I really had no intention to see you like this. Jango, then why are you so close to me? I just wanted to check your injury, but I stopped. I didn't even touch you because I felt like something was wrong. Jango, why? It's your responsibility to take care of me in this condition, isn't it? Ryan, but Jango, no excuses. Do it for why you are here now. Ryan, ah uh, me? She asked him, not really having the intention now to fulfill her duty. Jango, didn't you come here to do it? 
when sorry she blinked her eyes as she realized that what she was there for moving closer to him she brought her hand slowly to his injury but her hand was shaking seeing her shaking hand he raised his voice into a cold tone asked her jango are you okay with this or should i call hun or jay for this she can say to call them if hun comes he will get angry for her doing nothing and jay also went somewhere when i'm okay i'll do it she brought a chair near to him and sat beside the bed giving some distance between them while he looked at her in doubt questioning if she could really take care of him he closed his eyes letting her do what she does not with any suspicions in him it looks like he has trust in her at the moment but when she touched his injury the bandages with her cold soft fingers with a delicate touch as if he were a glass top he gave him chills he opened his eyes fixed his gaze on her she found her purse in her lips her face filled with concern as she unwrapped the bandages while cleaning the area applying some ointment she gave a cool sensation of medicine by her hands as she still carefully massaged it into his skin while she massages him he grips the blanket feeling the blood running through his nerves as her hands work the magic he bites his lower lip to control himself he doesn't like her touch he loves it losing himself in that moment she glances at him and finds him like that she thought he was experiencing pain and again due to her moments one sorry does it hurt she didn't hear it her properly he was just enjoying this why do you feel pain if yes i will give you a pain killer too jango this jango can bear anything she didn't understand no she gave him the pain killer to him or not she dodged full better from the chair but she didn't know that her touch was enough to make him painless powerfully her skills worked on him when i'll go now jango no no what else do i have to stay in here rather than go did i miss anything Oh yeah, tablets. Well, sorry I forgot to give you the tablets. Jango, I don't want them. Then what else does he want? Well, I would like to help you if you tell me what you want. It's already getting late. I'll go. Jango, I would like to have you baby. Days later she could hear him calling her baby again. But wait, what does that mean to have her? Her child trap. Jango, get on the bed. Be with me. Well, me? No. Jango, if you want things go easily, just get in the bed on your own. Otherwise, things will go hard on you. Is he warning me or asking me to do this? Whatever it means. How can I get on the bed? No, I can't do it. Jango, what are you thinking? Well, I can't do this. She said now was feeling not forced. Not change her body experience fear as she felt forced to sacrifice herself to him. and he understood her point jango did you really expect me to do it in this condition of her body he said wondering how she could expect this from him now but his tone sounds sarcastic which may have been right up in relief nothing else is gonna happen something jango just stay here until tai comes back that's it she reloaded understanding that there is nothing to be afraid of as she knows well his body condition too But how can she believe in him that easily? On second thought, maybe if he needs help, someone must be next to him to help. That's why he wanted her next to him. She thought there was no bad intention behind him. When he adjusted his pillow and positioned himself to sleep, she also got on the bed from the other side, lay down, created some distance between them. Even though he noticed it, he ignored it as if he was going to sleep. She covered herself with a blanket from her to her, not giving a single glimpse of her body. She closed her eyes tightly to sleep.